Hello, everybody. Welcome to our session about uh, vendor agnostic uh, serverless functions. Uh, we will be presenting today with Mohit. So, first, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Zbigniew Grubalik. I'm based in uh, Czech Republic. I'm uh, in general working at Red Hat in OpenShift serverless team. Uh, I'm a member of Knative uh, community, so I'm a member of Knative TOC. I'm also a maintainer of Project Keda, so if you have any questions on those two uh, projects, feel free to ask me. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohit Subban, and I work at Red Hat, and I'm a senior product manager working around Red Hat developer tools. I'm based out of India, and today we are going through some of the cool stuff, what we do around serverless, Knative, and functions. So I'll pass over to Vanik. Cool. So this is the short agenda. So we will do some introduction. This has been done, right? And then we are talking about serverless uh, functions, so maybe we'll say what the serverless actually is. Uh, then, then we will show, show the demo. Okay, so what is serverless? I, I bet that majority of people, when they serve serverless, they think, okay, that's AWS Lambda, right? But there might be uh, different, different ways how to achieve the similar capabilities. Uh, so, for example, this is a definition from CNCF. I won't read the whole definition, but basically the, the main point is that uh, serverless, there are applications that do not require server management and they have like a very simple deployment model, and they should be executed and scaled uh, based on the demand in the, in, the, in the very specific moment. So uh, if I can summarize this in a, in a few bullet points. So serverless, it's like auto-scaling, right? This is important feature of, of serverless, so scale to zero. Simplified de development and deployment model. And by its nature, the serv serverless services or functions uh, are event-driven, so they should be asynchronous. So we need to take this into consideration when we are, uh, let's say, building our, our solution based on the serverless uh, approaches. Also, the serverless, I don't want to deal with the server configuration or, or, or with the infrastructure configuration. This should be very, very simple with a, with a very nice UX. Also, when uh, we are talking about serverless, there's like serverless functions, function as a service. There are different opinions on this, on this, uh, on this terms, so this is how we see it, actually. So for us, the serverless is a deployment model that basically abstracts the, the, way, the, the way that we deploy the application on the, on the infrastructure, so it abstracts the infra infrastructure. It provides the capabilities to scale the workloads, uh, save, uh, save the configuration, and all this stuff. Functions, on the other hand, uh, is for us, is more like a programming model. So because uh, it, uh, it has like a certain uh, function signature that you need to, need, to, need, to, need to match to actually deploy the function. So once you, once you build this function, then you can deploy it as a, as a, as a uh, serverless workload. So serverless, you can take basically any of your containers or whatever, deploy it as a serverless, but functions is more like a glue, so you have like a strict, uh, strict uh, uh, thing to follow, and uh, it's usually like a small, small services. So, what is the idle serverless workload? It might be a workload that is stateless, because with the serverless, we would like to scale very fast, so we don't want to keep the state. But we don't want to keep the state inside the application. We can keep the state outside the application in some key value store, for example, Redis. But uh, we should not have the state. It should be ideally short running. So if your application is short running, it's ideal candidate for, for serverless workload, because it will do the, its job, and it will scale in. And if your application is HTTP-based or event-driven, then also it is a good candidate for, for a serverless workload. So let me explain more. Like this, Let's say this is the serverless pattern, we call it. So on the left-hand side, you can see event. It could be like a HTTP request. It could be Kafka message. It could be some other event. And this event triggers our application. And this application does some, does some work and produces some results based on this, this event. Once the, once the job is done, the uh, application should be, should be scaled in. Also, if there are more requests, the application will, will scale out. So this is the serverless, let's basically in a nutshell. And since we are on KubeCon, uh, so uh, let's, let's take a look on, on the serverless approach from, let's say, from the, from the Kubernetes way, because this, this might have uh, several benefits. Because, for example, if you have your traditional applications, your legacy applications already deployed uh, on your Kubernetes cluster, and you would like to maybe connect a bunch of services and make them, uh, like, let's say, serverless ready, then, uh, then you can use uh, the new use Knative basically to have all the workloads in a single single environment in a single uh, let's say cluster. If you use like for example AWS Lambda, you might have some some services in the in, the, in this runtime, and the other uh, might be in the, in another cluster. So 
having everything in, in one cluster is a benefit that basically you approach the, all the workloads the similar way. You can have uh, same CI, etc. Okay, so. Let's get started with what we have with Knative. So this was a CNCF incubating project started in March 2022. And we have seen a lot of community growth. We have a dedicated uh, booth in the project maintenance track for Knative. And these are the sites where you can read more about Knative and how you want to work ahead with. So the demo will be focusing more on that. These are the three specific aspects of Knative currently serving, eventing, and functions. Uh, serving basically is uh, allowing your container to have your applications from scale zero. And eventing is basically monitoring your infrastructure. Like, let's say you have some events which are there and you want to simulate your applications. Through the eventing process, you can do that. And functions is something which we are focusing a lot in the demo today. So you'll be having more understanding that how you can do serverless functions and with a vendor agnostic approach. So let's see how that exactly works when we say vendor agnostic. So right now, if you want to deploy a serverless function, it should not be dedicated to a specific cloud provider. Right? It can work on any Kubernetes platform. It can be a raw Kubernetes, or it can be in a hybrid cloud. Let's say it's working on Red Hat OpenShift, Microsoft Azure, AWS, or GCP. And the best advantage is any runtime you want to select or deploy your functions will work out of the box on any cloud provider. So that's the major advantage we are trying to showcase here. And in the demo, you will be seeing how we can replicate the same logic onto multiple clouds. Uh, to uh, help the developers more, we have also integrated this serverless workflow into multiple uh, ways. Like you can do the same using CLI, or you can also do it through your ID uh, extensions. So you as a developer need not switch between multiple tools to perform one task. So the idea is if you are a developer who resides in your specific ID, let's say you are comfortable with Visual Studio Code, or you are comfortable with IntelliJ. So the idea is you want to do all those serverless tasks directly from your ID. So you have your application open in a workspace, and you want to deploy that application, creating a function, building that function, and deploying. Everything can be done directly from your ID. So we have a dedicated extensions for them, which is known as uh, VS Code Knative and IntelliJ Knative. So it goes by the uh, community name of Knative. So we have a lot of community participants uh, who are contributing to that extension, and it has a multiple releases across every three weeks. So we are continuously working on that, and these are some of the stuffs which we'll be also focusing in the demo. So uh, right now, let's get started with what we have for the demo, because that's the most exciting part here. So let's get started with it. So right now, if you see, we have uh, OpenShift uh, uh, running on AWS, and we have our application already deployed for the demo. So this, is, this will showcase you a front-end application, which is written on React and already deployed on OpenShift. If you can see the view, the application is already deployed here. If you click on it, you can see all the routes are already created, and it's currently running. So let's go and see how that application currently looks. This is where we have already hosted our application. You can see the URL. It's, it might be a bit smaller, but this is how the application looks. And this is a simple React application which we have written. And let's say what the functionality is. So right now, I want to search any neighborhood in Amsterdam city, and I want to uh, see the latitude and longitude of the area. So let's say right now we are in Amsterdam Rye. So let's type and see, OK, so we have multiple places here which mentions that. So let's type that. OK, so we have got this. So you can see it automatically fetches, OK, this is the location, and this is the latitude and longitude here. So we have already defined that. So this application is deployed. So the next step is how we can connect multiple functions to it. And we can see, OK, for this location, what's the specific weather? And if we know, OK, what's the specific weather, then we have the second task, which we will be showcasing later on. So let's go back to the slides again. So in this demo, we already have, as I mentioned, we have a React application with a Node.js uh, backend, and which is already running in a Kubernetes deployment. This deployment is currently OpenShift on AWS, but it will also seamlessly work on any Kubernetes platform you have. With this front-end application, the socket IO communication does with the backend, which is on Node. And we have a cloud event emitter and the REST APIs, which communicate together to send the data given on that street, what's the latitude and longitude, and what's the weather, which will be coming from the functions we have. So the backend here emits cloud event and also exposes the REST APIs, which basically communicate to the front-end. 
when I say cloud event, these are some of the uh, examples that how you, you see the cloud event look like. You can specify what type of endpoint it needs, uh, what type of content it has, it's an application type, and you can also pass uh, the exact format here that you want to pro pro provide the name, the quantity, the price. It's, it has an SDK which is available across languages, like from Golang to Node.js, and basically the data here contains the payload, what payload we want to uh, pass on to it. The next part comes to the eventing part here. Uh, there are three specific uh, types what, when we talk about eventing. One of them is a broker, which is an event mesh. Right now in the demo, we'll be going through in-memory, but you can also configure your Kafka or your RabbitMQ instance. The second part comes from the triggering, that when you have a workload which is already subscribed to that broker to receive those cloud events, it will uh, trigger that task. And the third one is pretty important here because it does a sync binding. Basically, your standard application will be connected to that broker together, and your application can listen to all the communications coming from that cloud event through the backend. So this is, uh, you can read more about it from the eventing documentation we have. So this is how the, exactly the application looks. So right now, what I showcase on the demo, this is the front-end app, which already has a backend connected to it. And now what it will do is it will do a cloud event emitting to connect to that broker. So let's go to VS Code and see how it does. So this is my application, which is already open in my Visual Studio Code uh, instance. And I have uh, my broker.yaml already open. If you can see, these are the configuration which we need to define here. And this is the sync binding which will be uh, added to it. And so let's uh, run this code. And we do. OK. They, yeah. So you can see uh, the sync binding is already created. And if you go to the Knative extension, so this is the Knative IDE extension, what we have on Visual Studio Code. Uh, I can, and the similar experience will be there on IntelliJ also. So let's say if you are a developer who is comfortable more on the IntelliJ side, we'll have the similar experience. And if you see, I already have deployed my broker, so it will be present here. And my sync binding is also added here. And if I go to my uh, topology view, you can see as soon as uh, previously it was just having this React application deployed, but now it also has the broker and the sync binding connected to it. So I'll pass on to uh, Binik to discuss more about what next we can do with the functions experience. Thank you, Mike. So what you just saw, it's the standard application. And as I mentioned, you can mix your standard applications with the service functions. So let's, let's build a function. So let's build a function that will uh, tell us uh, what is the weather actually on, on that location. So what can I do? I can open, open the uh, Knative view in the, in the VS Code. And I just okay, say, OK, okay, let's create the function. I will call it weather. Uh, I need to select a runtime. So with the Knative functions, we support multiple runtimes. So I will write this, uh, this function in Go. Uh, and we have several templates. So when I was talking about Knative functions, it's like this programming model. So we offer like, different templates for, like, for, for the developers. So they can just uh, create a function on a specific template, and then uh, it, will, it will serve the request. So it could be it could be template based based on HTTP, so it, it will accept incoming HTTP requests, or it could it could parse cloud events. Because our standalone application exposes uh, cloud events, we will we will use the cloud events one, and we will just create it in the uh, in our uh, in our directory. So let me just select the location and create a function. Uh, okay, so and I will add it to my workspace. So as you can see, there on the left-hand side, I hope it's visible, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty standard Go function. There is a Go mode, and there is a, the most important thing is this handle.go. So basically, this is, a, this is all I need to do uh, to implement the business logic. So this is the function signature, and it uh, accepts the cloud event. And I just need to, to uh, write the code in here. So I will need, need to fetch, uh, fetch the weather information from some endpoint. Uh, I will cheat a little bit, because we don't have much time. So I will, I will just copy paste the the source code, but I will, I will explain it a little bit. So, okay. And uh, I, will, I will actually deploy this function. So I can do it through the through UI or through this command line. So all I need to do is to run uh, func deploy, which is our CLI tool. And now it will start building the, building the function image, and it will deploy the image. What the function does is basically it just, it just calls the API endpoint on, the, on this location and uh, sends a new cloud event back to the broker with our information about the weather information. Let me go back to the slides. So 
Uh, this is what I was just talking about. We have this uh, KNT functions, which provides the uh, developer experience, and uh, we have the templates, and we support multiple runtimes, and uh, you can you can uh, you can uh, you can trigger the functions based on HTTP or cloud events. So, how how do we build the function from the source code? We are using uh, build packs, or we can use S2I strategies, and we're also uh, planning to add more strategies for building the image. So uh, if you don't know what uh, our build packs is, it's a cool CNCF project that uh, lets you automate the process of building the container images based on the, based on the runtime that you have. So um, we with the functions provide like the set of runtimes run and set of uh, prepared build, uh, build packs builders that will automatically package our application and produce a container image. When this container image is, is ready, then it's been pushed to container registry, and then it has been deployed as a Knative service. So Knative service is the is the one of the main components of, of Knative. is the serverless uh, serverless uh, deployment model for for the serverless application applications. And what it provides, it basically, you, I can just uh, tell it this is my container. It will deploy the container as a as a as a Knative service, and it will automatically scale my application based on incoming HTTP requests. Uh, I would like to uh, stop uh, a little bit on, on here because scaling based on uh, incoming HTTP request is, a, is another uh, simple task. Because imagine you have your application that is accepting uh, HTTP requests. Let's say I'll scale this application to zero replicas, and guess, go, guess what? I would like to uh, reach this application. So if I do a request, I need to somehow catch the incoming request, hold it for a while, uh, scale out my application and then forward the forward the request further down. So this is all been handled by by Knative for you. So you don't need to uh, take care of this. We, uh, there is also separation of code and configuration. So let's say I deploy my application in, in version one, then I can uh, deploy version two, and uh, Knative automatically stores let's say let's say snapshot of the configuration. So you can easily roll back uh, between the versions, or you can even specify multiple. Uh, traffic splitting uh, uh, multiple rollout strategies. So let's say I would like to send 80% of the traffic to my previous version and 20% uh, percent traffic to my new version. So our function is being built by BuildPex as a container and then uh, deployed as a, as a standard Kubernetes, uh, standard Knative service. So this is what the application looks like now. So the, uh, the application um, should send a cloud event uh, to our broker with the coordinates. The, the, we, should, we should connect the weather application to the broker, and then it will, it will reply back. So, so our, our function has been already deployed, as you can see in here, and it has been already uh, uh, scaled, uh, scaled to zero replicas because there is no traffic. I just need to connect my, my app to this, to this broker, so I will, I will connect this, uh, this, uh, this function to, to the broker. And because I know that the standalone application emits cloud events, uh, cloud events has, let's say, let's say, some metadata about the cloud event and then the payload. And in the metadata, there is a, a field which is called type. So I can filter, filter these cloud events uh, based on the type, for example. So uh, this is very useful when you are connecting different, uh, different uh, let's say, event providers. It could be Kafka. It could be, I don't know, some, 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 some custom, custom stuff, some Revit stuff. And uh, everything is being uh, bundled as a cloud event. So the, you can imagine the cloud event as, a, let's say, uh, as a wrapper around your uh, arbitrary workload, and you can access the cloud event, all the cloud events, uh, unified way. This is a very huge benefit, I would say. So let's let's filter, let's filter based on type, and I know the type is uh, is coordinates. And now my, my function, uh, now my function uh, receives the the coordinates. Uh, it it queries the the endpoint and it receives the weather data. And now I need to talk back to my uh, to my standalone application. I can do it fr from the from the function, or I can write another function that will do that for me. So let me let me go back to the uh, VS Code, and I will create another function. This time it will be it will be a node function. I will call it responder, so it will respond back to the uh, back to the back to the application, and it will also accept the cloud event. So it will accept the cloud event from the from the weather function, and it will it will reply back to my standalone application. So let's create this function. I'll add it to, to, the, to the workspace. And again, this is the responder, and it is very standard node project. There is index.js where you need to implement your business logic. Again, I will, I will cheat because we don't have much time, so I will, I will, I will just copy paste the code, and I will uh, put it into my index.js. And what we are doing here, uh, let me, let me. So this is the handle function, which receives an event, and 
it's, it, uh, if the event is type of weather, which is the one from the function, it will send it to the, uh, to the backend on the, on the rest endpoint, and that, that's it. So, okay, so let's, let's, let's deploy this function again. All I need to do is to write a uh, func deploy responder, and this will, this will build the function and uh, respond, uh, and it will, uh, it will deploy it on, the, on a Kubernetes cluster. So if we go back to the slides, so this, 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 setup, this setup should be okay. And now we are building this stuff. So we are building this responder function that takes the, takes the event from the broker and making a HTTP request uh, to, our, to our app. I did, uh, I did the deployment through the command line, but uh, we, we also have the extension where you can, for, for functions, you can, you, can, you, can, you can do this through the, through the uh, for the ID, so you can uh, build a function, deploy the function, or you can invoke the function. Invoking the functions means that, uh, for example, you would like to test your function, and you know that the function accepts certain cloud event, so you can uh, you can send the test payload to this uh, to this directly to this function, and this function can run on your cluster or it can run locally. Uh, uh, so, for example, this is Node application, so you can just run npm start. It will start uh, on your local host, or you can run it uh, uh, locally in your container. So I can see that my application, uh, my second function has been deployed. So let, let's uh, quickly check. Okay, my responder function is here. So I will also connect it to the, to the broker. And I'm interested in cloud event type of weather. So that's it. So all done. So now if I, uh, if I search for an address, I hope that uh, we will see we will see some uh, some weather information in the, in between. So you can see that now we can see the weather weather information about a specific location. I just want to highlight that this is a simple demo. So I know that you can do all this stuff maybe in a in a single single application, but we really ju just want to showcase how you can how you can uh, use this event driven approach. So we can have multiple functions, and each function is been scaled based on the specific needs. So maybe some part of the application requires higher load, some some requires uh, lower load. So this is this is the current state. So what can we do now? So it looks like a very uh, good weather and with a good wind speed. So I want to rent an e-bike. Can you help me with that? Sure, sure. Let's write a function for this, right? So we promised Amsterdam City data. So Amsterdam City data uh, is, um, or Amsterdam City provides, a, provides an open data on this, on this, uh, on this endpoint. Uh, it's in Dutch, so I needed to use a translator because I don't speak any Dutch. But this particular endpoint uh, is telling me like what are the scooters, uh, e-scooters uh, available uh, in Amsterdam. So we will just uh, query this endpoint. We will get the list of the scooters, and we will try to find uh, the closest, few closest uh, scooters that are to this to this coordinates that we specify in the in the application. So basically, uh, so basically, we will implement this. So we will implement uh, another function that will receive the very same coordinates from the from the from the broker and respond back and respond to the to the responder. So let's go. Uh, again, I will I will I will use uh, GoLang because I love Go. So let's call this scooters. Let's use Go again. We will use uh, cloud events, uh, and we will use uh, use our directory. We will create a function. We will add it to the force space. And if you look at the scooters, again, it's a, it's a good function. Again, I will cheat, so I will, I will put the, the implementation in there. OK, 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 scooters in here. So I will just deploy it. So if we look at the, at the, at the function, it's simple. Also, it, receives the, it receives the coordinates. Uh, then it talks to the endpoint. And then uh, it, it checks if the scooter is available. Because they're in the in the REST API, there's also like unavailable scooters. So and it will sort them by distance, and it will it will give me five closest scooters. And again, I will respond back in a cloud event. This this kind this type it will be type of type scooters. So let's let's deploy this deploy this function. So right now, again, it's very very simple. Just provide a business logic and. Uh, the build packs are building the application and then deploying, deploying as a as a cognitive service. So I'll just refresh the topology view. So we need to wait a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, what we can do, we can we can quickly check check again the, the extension. So you can see that I have like the I have all all the functions here. I can see that the, if they are local or if they are deployed already on the cluster, I can deploy them, undeploy them, I can build them. 
here I can see all the eventing infrastructure. So the eventing infrastructure is really for, for plugging all the stuff together. And we can see that our, our function has been deployed, so let's, let's quickly check. Okay, it's here, perfect. So I will also connect it to my, to my broker. I can do it through the UI, I can do it through the command line that we have. We have uh, KN, KN CLI for this, or, or I can use a, a YAML file. So this time, I would like to receive uh, coordinates to this coordinates, and also I will need to actually update my responder, because my responder function, if you recall, my responder function uh, just accepts the type of uh, cloud event type of weather. I need to ex extend it with the type of scooters, which provides my, uh, my, new, uh, my, new, my new function. So I, I will need to uh, update this function and, and build it. So is there any other way which you can do this? Well, yeah, yeah. So basically, at the moment, we are building the function locally. This might not be option for everybody because some, some maybe I don't want to run Docker on my machine, I don't want to run Podman on my machine, or maybe my company doesn't allow me to run, run this kind of stuff on my machines. Or I, I just want to use, use the CI or something like that. So what we can do, we can, we can build a function on a cluster because we have the, we have the power in the cluster, so let's, let's use, use this one. And how we can achieve that? Uh, we will, for that, we will, we will use uh, we will use, uh, approach, we, we call it on cluster build. So on cluster build uh, takes my source code, uh, it, uh, it forwards it to the cluster, uh, to a volume, and it will initiate the Tecton pipeline. If you don't know Tecton, Tecton is a uh, Kubernetes uh, CI, let's say, and it, it will execute the, the pipeline, it will build the function again, and it will again deploy it as a, as a, as a K-native service. Uh, what I want to show you today is uh, something a little bit more advanced. Uh, we, it's called pipeline as a code. So uh, the pipeline definition lives, lives with the source code of my function, and I can submit it to the Git repository, and this, uh, this function will be, will be automatically built with each, let's say, commit or each action uh, against this repository. So I can easily, easily, easily build, build the function on cluster triggered from, from, the, from the GitHub. So let me update the function again. I will. I will cheat a little bit, so I just need to add this, add this case. So in here, so in this case, I have I have two cases, and I will talk to different endpoint on my on my uh, on my on my ap uh, application. So what I need to do, I need to configure configure uh, this uh, this function to to actually actually do this stuff. So what I need to do, I can run this this command. Uh, I can run func config, which is like a for configuration of, of the of the function. And I would like to configure git, and I would like to set set the git. But before I can do it, before I will do it, I will in actually initiate initiate the uh, the git, git git repository on my on my responder function. So I will go to the responder directory. Okay, and I also have like this. So basically, what I'm doing, I'm just initializing a new new uh, Git repo in this, and I've already created a GitHub project. So what I did, I just uh, initiated a Git repo, and now I need to run run my my configuration for for the Git. So it will ask me a couple of questions. Uh, it will it will find like the correct correct uh, URL for the for the function. Uh, are we targeting the main branch? So we are targeting the main main branch. We can target multiple branches. And uh, it could be subpath, whatever. And this is like, uh, it asks me if I want to configure the webhook. So it means that it will automatically uh, uh, build the function for me when there is new commits. Yes, I would like to do it. And I need to provide my access token. So I will copy it and I will just provide the access token. Sorry, I just need to probably copy paste it. Okay. The layout is a little bit broken, so. Here it is. So what's happening? Um, in, my, in my source code of a repo, there are new, new pipeline definitions created on the cluster. The cluster is configured to, to talk to the, to the GitHub repo, and the GitHub repo uh, is been, uh, is been hopefully set up for, for like the, the action. I can see some error, but I hope that it will be work. So what I need to do, I just need to commit these changes to, to my Git repo. So I will, OK, let's add, add CI. I will commit this stuff, and I will publish. So if we go to my, uh, to my, this is the GitHub repository, uh, I will just refresh it, and we should see the, the new code. And here is a small action running, uh, running on, the, 
on this on this latest commit, and it is running the, the, the build of the function on my cluster. So I will go back to my cluster and switch to pipelines. And on the pipelines, we can see that there is a new pipeline run, running, and it's, it has three tasks. So the first task is, is pulling the, the Git repo. Uh, the second task uh, is, is, is just finished. It build, it'll build a, build a function uh, using build packs. And the third, uh, third step, it will, it will actually deploy, deploy the function. So we just need to wait a little bit, hopefully. It will be. So the deploy step is still running. And once once the function is updated, I will see a new new revision, new revision of my of my function. Seems like demo gods are not with us today. Okay. Okay, but trust me, this, this actually works. So uh, let me let me fall back to uh, to my backup solution, which is the which is the application that is been deployed in different namespace, the very same application, and I will I will show that it actually works. So if I if I select some address, now, if we go back to the topology view, just let me refresh. Maybe the internet connection is not good. It it already like uh, uh, forward me like the 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 closest scooters to this to this location, and really what it does, it just talks to through this through these functions and uh, do do all the stuff. So this is the this is the final solution, and uh, thanks thanks for the feedback. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. So are there any questions? Yeah, there's a question. Yeah. Oh, can I hear you? Can you be a bit louder? It is, it is okay. so, Kubernetes. So it's like the Kubernetes scheduler. So how, how fast we can schedule the pod. But what we can do, we can set the minimum replicas to, to one. So we always have one, one, one instance of function is running, and we will just scale out. But we are using Kubernetes, so there are some drawbacks in this, and this is, relates to, 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 to the scheduler. Any other questions? So we are also available at Red Hat Booth. So if you have more questions around this, feel free to drop by and we'll be glad to answer. So thank you, thank you guys. Thank you.